Okay, we're good. Watch Diablo 2, Medan Trailer. I don't know what that is. Just a second. The WoW problem, and this is something that I've talked about a lot, and this is like, I actually feel really passionate about this. That's why I wanted to see it, because usually we don't watch a lot of Bellier videos. But I do really care about this, because it's the, um, it's the reward structure of the game, which, in my opinion, is what kind of... Uh, it's what makes the game, right? It's why people play, for the rewards. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Here's the deal, right? Basically no news happened this week, but rather than grasp- That's actually really weird, cause like his, look at this, like, scruffy beard, weird ass hair thing to try to make it look like you're not going bald. Bellior, I see you. Let's try to do something uh, productive and have a discussion. But first, as always, a massive thank you to everyone over on Patreon. They really make this what? stuff possible. The new wave of uh, Master Tier rewards Ooh, for that? this month is, um, well, you know, that's now announced as of now. And we also have these. These are vinyl stickers. Um, I got a test order of 100 of them. They're really cool. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to throw those oh, in, for as, his, his uh, in as well. Logo. So, massive thank you to them cool. for supporting the channel. And let's get into the discussion. So recently I've been okay. wondering why many people, myself included, have found World of Warcraft's rewards to be not really as compelling lately. Now, I've been trying to think um, about solutions as well, and surprisingly, Blizzard's approach to heritage armor is what made me realize that I actually think they have a lot of things kind of wrong. Now, this may seem all doom and gloom, but it really isn't. I actually think yes, this is, is something the Blizzard themselves yes, really is. want to do. I think they're kind of struggling along the way though. So. Rewards. What do you think of when you think about a reward in a game? I think most of us picture like a piece of gear that looks epic. Yep. Uh, certainly looking back, you know, to the day, that was a big driver of gameplay. You saw someone who looked cooler than you, you wanted to look that cool, and getting that, was that me gear right was there a way the, to look uh, cool. Red. Here's the thing, in though. The middle, dude, I don't really think you actually me. cared about the stats and the gear as much. I mean, not really. That probably wasn't the core driver of, like, the fantasy that made it's you excited. It's the prestige. That's what matters. Um, now, you know, of course, it was a combination of the satisfaction of having a bit more power, but mainly, I would say, you don't want to look like that. Of having earned something and then looking really cool, and that's just a viscerally fun there thing to is. have happen. You right-click that bit of gear, you see those new shoulder By the way, just a little, uh, pads, little fun you... fact there, you would never actually use that sword uh, it, for tanking if you had this tier 6 set right here. Uh, with the belt right there from Sunwell, wrong belt that he was using there. The belt actually comes from Black Temple. Uh, you'd actually use the sword from Kalegos because it had a faster attack speed. It was a better sword. You feel great. Now, World okay. of Warcraft traditionally was fantastic at doing Just this. A, and problem. not only for gear. Back in vanilla, things like, say, your mount skill. That was a massive milestone. And since there were comparatively so few mounts in the game, each one felt a bit more unique and thrilling. Uh, there were unique class quests and items, loads of longer quest chains, uh, professions had a lot more to them, uh, and there's just pathways yeah. of, you know, getting lots of, like, strong visual progression there. Now, Burning Crusade largely continued this, but it added flying. Now, getting epic flying was a massive milestone that kept people excited for weeks. Yeah, and I had then to borrow money from my that, mom Collecting the flying it. mounts was really exciting, because yeah, spending three weeks on Skedis or um, Netherring, well, back then, there were so few flying mounts in total that each one of them felt unique. Having another wing drink. I just want to go there ahead and go back so real quick. Do you see? It's really exciting because spending three weeks on Skedis. This fuck ass piece of shit motherfucker, dick sucking piece of shit motherfucker, right here. This guy right here. These is why you bought Epic Flying. They would chase you the fuck down and they would hit you until you got dazed off your goddamn mount. And people finally learned that if you flew all the way up, directly vertically, it would make it to where you'd never get hit by them. And you know what Blizzard did? They fucking fix it. <clears throat> God damn. I don't know what that is. Alright, let's go. I, I really hate those birds, alright? That's all I have to say. They, they, fuck it, I just don't like them. Get a soda? I, just, I, okay, just a minute. Let me, let me go back to where I was at. Okay, we're here. There were so few flying mounts in total that each one of them felt mm. unique. Having a Netherwing Drake felt very different to just having a swift griffin. 
Wrath largely continued on with this trend, but it opened up the visual progression to more players, um, just with its content, and added big new earnable milestones like, say, the Tundra Mammoth. Now, mounts were still pretty low in overall count as compared to today, so one. even back then, I had that one earning too. them still felt kind of new and exciting, um, especially because many people only just got their flying in Wrath. But then we'll yes. saw it as Cataclysm, because it honestly didn't feel that exciting in this regard, with not much in the way of uh, non-raid cosmetic progression. But of course, you know, it had a few uh, cool mounts. This all would then change with Transmog, and I would argue that this was the last massive increase to WoW's cosmetic progression. For many people, this unlocked weeks, even months of progress. Now, Mr. Pandaria, Years, you know, actually. had its pet battles, and while I think that opening up LFR so much was probably a mistake, that did let people shoot for more yep. visual rewards, and that was a reason to play. As for Wad, well, the garrison progression was fun for about three weeks, but after that, the expansion just petered out. It was a really bad time dude, for mount collectors. Dude, we that first month, dude, that first month of Wad, I actually wanted to log on and play the game. I was so happy. Like, I would log on and I would play... And it was wide. I was so, so happy. It was amazing, dude. I, I would go on. I would enjoy everything about it. It would just be fucking great. I would be like, hey, guys, who wants to come do a, a, the challenge mode dungeon for today? They're like, oh, which one is it? Oh, it's for UBRS. Okay, let's go. And then we'd all get over to the UBRS and we'd do the dungeon. And it would take like two hours and we'd finally finish it. We'd get a good piece of gear. And it was just awesome. Everything about Wad, like the first, like Wad up until High Mall was unironically good. It actually was good. And then they added High Mall and it was fucking easy. You just had High Mall equips all of the rest of the gear in the game. And so it became Warlords of High Mall instead of Warlords of Draenor. It was terrible. Blizzard has no idea. That's the problem. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh. I'll remember Boar Lords of Paymore. Uh, Legion was pretty <laughs> great, though. Our artifacts had loads of visuals and a fair bit of progression okay. uh, through that stuff like saving the Mage Tower as That's well. That's a new one. I haven't and heard that, that one was before. probably the Mage Tower was some of the most time efficient content the team have probably ever made. Yeah. Now, we then have features like the class mounts, which are relevant to this day and amazingly managed to make a mount reward feel exciting. Not and that's really. the thing with mounts. There's like 500 really of them. I never really cared about so that. So just adding a few new ones doesn't make them feel special. That's what I've and been saying for years, dude. And having a mount as a reward is less Failure exciting been watching the, my stream. today than it was in Vanilla TBC or Wrath. And then we hit Battle for Azeroth. Returns. The allied race stuff is pretty good, but past that, the progression is really kind of weak. We don't have something like artifacts in terms of, you know, level of customization and long-term cosmetic unlocks. You're right, we don't We have don't that. have something like the class mounts yet. No, the we don't. The epic faction-themed faction, uh, yeah. faction -themed gear for Warfronts is Bell, unlocked in the like optimist. about four hours of, of time, and the raid gear's been kind yeah. of lackluster. For the players who, you know, they just want to see someone who looks epic in town and they want to, like, emulate that, there's not really that much these days. And yep. that's combined with Battle for Azeroth not really innovating with its reward mechanics. Sure, we get Azerite, but that just looks the same as regular gear. We get Titan Forges, but they look the same. Ultimately, in terms that's of the emotional point. reasons yeah. that underpin why people feel a sense of progression in a game, <laughs> style is the best set. Uh, losing our class sets and then not innovating in terms of I other actually do really rewards like the that much. Set. Plus, everything just being diluted by years of additions means that yep. getting a new mount or a new pet just isn't uh, really as exciting as it used to be. No one gives a fuck. Now, what got to me was the Blood Elf um, and Dwarf Heritage Armor. First, it looks really wonderful, but the thing is, mm -hmm. it's gained from a 15 to 30 minute long quest line. Most players will already, of course, have the rep requirement. So all those art resources, AKA nobody 15 cares. minutes of content per race, that gets to the heart of my problem. Blizzard struggled to make the basics of their rewards feel exciting. Blizzard That's create right. this like additive content, not multiplicative content. They make a set, you spend 15 minutes questing yep. for that set, and that's it. Is that really worth the tens or hundreds of man hours that went into making that set. Now, an example of a multiplicative system would be having armor that is designed today. for transmog, such that you could Better. unlock, you know, such that it could unlock other options. Now, this is something that Chris Robinson, I believe, actually um, hit on during the BlizzCon Q&A. So, as an example, if Blizzard was to add four sets, one for each armor type, and those sets initially had neutral colors plus tint options, that would be multiplicative in nature. What does that mean? Well, yeah. you would have gameplay involved in unlocking that set. But then, because That's that like armor would colors. be visually flexible, it would be able to mix and match with other existing bits of gear and transmog sets. So maybe you've got a pair of shoulders that look epic, but they don't really match with anything in a way that you like. While the system... Well, if you're a part of my transmog competition, you just put them together anyway and you show up. Fuck it. Like this. 
could make your could allow you to start making more tailored sets. Hell, you could even lock uh, you know unlock special tints for doing harder rare content. So that's what? multiplicative in nature because rewards based on difficulty. Who said that before? Because of the effects that its addition would have on other systems and other rewards in the game, that would be a more effective leveraging of Blizzard's development time. Yeah. And um, in you know this case, it would actually feel different to the current rewards. Right now in BFA, if you're just a player who wants to look epic, you can get like 90% of the way there with very little effort, as I did. Um, now, I think that having a diverse array of cosmetic rewards would just be a great boon for the game. It would be fantastic. I think it would actually get people excited. I think the basics of World of Warcraft's like emotional character progression, so, you know, the progression that you really feel um, awesome for getting, uh, stuff like unlocking an epic new weapon, uh, I think those things have kind of worn thin. Mount 450 is that... And I just want to stop and say this is exactly what they did with the Mage Tower, right? They basically just added a new weapon skin. And the new weapon skin, probably, I would assume that the Mage Tower, in terms of time spent creating it versus time that players invested doing things that were involved with or leading towards the Mage Tower, was probably the best ratio that you could ever imagine. Literally, all they had to do was make one fucking boss that everybody was just like, okay, I'm going to go kill this boss. And that created tons of content for all the players in the game because they had to do raids and figure out their class and do their class order hall quest line and do all these other ancillary things and secondary things. And it ended up being a huge amount of content for the game, even if it was in an indirect way exciting than mount 30 pet 500 is less exciting than pet 5 uh, that's rather than adding a, a bunch of new stream. pets to islands or a bunch there of new is. mounts to vendors or some traditional feeling sets for doing some short quests yep. i think blizzard need to focus on how they can reinvigorate and rethink the core of their visual progression such that players have more diverse and compelling rewards um, and as well just more room for their own creative expression so let's talk ideas first we've got the tunable armor that. Uh, that is a system that um you know could initially have one set for each armor type probably with a neutral uh, visual style but then you could add to that over time and then each addition to that system would be great it would unlock even more options for mixing and matching as well as more ways to reward players with unlockable tints for that gear then i think professions should have sets hell even you know something like say an epic set for maxing out every expansion's profession skill. What? Uh, for zone content. How about we get a unique bit of uh, armor or profession weapon for 100 percenting a zone? I mean, yeah. What is this, 2007? Is kind of cool, but it would be cooler if you could get something tangible the hell is that's this like, shit? tied to the aesthetics of that zone. You could, um, oh. you know, even go back to the older zones in the game and add relevancy to them through doing something like that. How about a oh. or set for um, Alliance and Horde, and then an Eastern Kingdom set for Alliance and Horde, and that would actually give you something for doing the lore master for each one. Now, moving on to mounts, that one's a lot more challenging because the only mounts that feel different are like the Transmog Yak, the Tundra Mammoth, the Auction House Longboy, and the Water Strider. Why? Because they're all mechanically different, and that boy. makes earning them See? exciting because you can do he something knows. new with them. Now, Guild Wars 2 has embraced this. They have a small number of mount categories, but each of them actually has their own mastery tree, what the and this fuck? allows you to progress your mount. Now, while the WoW, wow. class mounts are mechanically That's identical, cool. I think they were so thematically strong that they managed to stand apart from the pack and actually feel yeah, unique. Yeah, I can't wait so to get a proto can drink that do looks something like this again. Wow. Well, how exciting. You could give different mount families different bonuses. Maybe dragons could nom a critter for a speed boost. Maybe elementals could move extra fast through their elemental type. Perhaps you could add, um, I don't know, new mount categories, like say the Guild Wars 2 ones, give them you know, a clear mechanical um, niche and an unlock tree, maybe visually and in terms of abilities. Maybe let players transmog old mount appearances onto the new shiny ones. Okay, wow. that's kind of overbearing and would lead to some balance concerns, but I think you get my point. Okay. There are so many mounts in the game that bar the really, really special ones, mounts just are Nobody not a, a fuck. reward anymore. I mean, hell, you could just wholesale copy Guild Wars 2, um, its mastery system. Now, that basically... Um, the Let me give you an example right now of how much mounts don't matter. Is I just had a paladin that did 7,000 DPS get the mount from Underrot from me, and he wouldn't trade it to me. He learned it himself. And I told him, grats, because I want the mount. But do I really give a fuck? Nah, not really. I, I, I should... If... if 
See, if this was Asmongold from 2008, I would be trying to hunt this guy down right now and like spam him and try to offer him money and like flip the fuck out, getting so mad. And the fact that I'm not spurging out over the fact that I didn't get them out is indication that Belior is right. Uh, caps you at level 80, but your XP bar doesn't go away. Instead, each time you fill your XP bar, you get a mastery point, and you can spend these mastery points on any mastery that you want. Maybe you want to be more effective using your glider to get about the place, Paragon or you want levels. to augment your mounts abilities. I actually think the character progression like that could be a real game changer for World of Warcraft. It would allow Blizzard to embrace the fun and turn it into a reward, rather than constantly being the fun police, nerfing things like gliders, which I think many people will remember from the start of Legion. So here's what's clear to me. Yeah. While getting new gear and smashing enemies with larger numbers is pretty compelling, MMORPGs need more than that. They need a compelling and visceral progression to your character's visual identity. It's that, like, that's the stuff you feel. Loot that feels epic because it looks cool. They should just hire a or... system unlocks more creativity. I mean, he has a game design a way to degree. augment your character rather than just, there we um, go. you know, your specialization. And I think that's the issue. WoW has not really innovated in this area in quite a while. I think that this has hurt them quite a bit, um, but I think it's a bit of a blue ocean situation, right? Because they've done so little, there's so much growth potential that they could really impress people. So while a 15 minute quest line to get a single bit of armor uh, and some mascara is fine. I ultimately yeah. think that that's the sort of thing that players will do once and forget. I don't think it's creating long-term value, and I think really creating long-term value is what Blizz needs to do. And let's be real here, they can't the push the mechanical that. progression further than where it is now. They need to start innovating in the visual and cosmetic direction if they want people to feel their character's progress. I mean, what will happen next? Will they just remove yeah. our talent tree and put that all onto Azerite V2? <laughs> Is stop, that where our dude, abilities stop. Will go? Like, they've stop. stripped so much away Don't from say the that. classes and then Don't give them any ideas. into a progression system. They, they can't do yeah, it anymore. Yeah, don't give them any they can't, ideas. Like, do more Titan forging. Th those systems have hit their limit. They <laughs> need to create progression along we'll other see. areas that feels new uh, and fresh in comparison to what people have now. And I think that is Blizzard's big challenge. I think if they do it right, they could really, really make the game uh, more sticky, so to speak. You know, keep people playing week on week. Well, that would make Much me like sticky. How when That'd Transmog be great. First I'd love out, it. Even when there was a big content drought people were still trying to build up sets from old raids because that had unlocked a whole bunch of content. And Transmog, I think, is a great example of something that was multiplicative in nature. And the effectiveness of that is something that should be remembered when thinking about new content and systems. Transmog is content. So there you go. Even That's my thoughts like on World of Warcraft's reward problem and why I don't think it feels super rewarding. And I think that's why Battle of Azeroth maybe is not going to retain players as well as Legion did with its artifacts and its tints and its class mounts and all those nice things. Of course, there's still plenty of time for this expansion to progress. And my great hope is the Blizzard will embrace some of these more multiplicative ideas rather than just throwing sets at the wall that take, you know, 20 minutes to unlock, because I don't think that's going to be a good use of their resources. So thank you very much for watching this video. I really want to hear what really? you think about the reward system of you the mean game, a 20 how second, you've experienced 20 it. minute reward uh, chain isn't going to keep people playing rewarding? the game? Do you feel excited what do you mean? to, you know, are there rewards do you feel excited to try to get from a non-statistics perspective? I would love to know. So please do let me know. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you next time. I, I, I mean, I'll be honest, guys. That's a video that we should have, like, you know what? I'm going to link it in chat. I don't do this enough. I'm going to link it in chat. Everybody go ahead and give Bellior a sub and give him a, give him a like, guys. That was a great video. Okay. Got him. This is what we've been waiting for. These videos are what we've been waiting for. The discussion of the game on a meta level and understanding players on a psychological level is what Blizzard doesn't do. And that's what needs to happen. I don't know why, but for whatever fucking reason, it's just not one of the things that uh, they care about anymore. I think they just spend all their time agreeing with each other. And then uh, the time in between that, it's like, what the fuck is the point, man? Uh, we don't click links. It's funny, dude. Okay. Uh, but yeah, yeah. They're overthinking it. Just do what's fun. Well, it, it's not about doing what's fun. I, I think that's like a stupid thing to say. Like, it, like you're really going to just say, oh, you're overthinking it? Come on, man.